Let's go ahead and pray as we get started. Father, thank you so much for this Sunday morning. I want to give you given us as a gift. I pray that you would lead us by your spirit as we study the book of James. We thank you that you're a good and gracious God, and that you're faithful in all your ways. And here, as we read about that and see that laid out for us, that we be encouraged in our faith and strengthened for, uh, for each day that you have for us this week. And so please lead us and bless us now and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi, Carolyn. We can talk to your prayer. Now you can't cut it out very easily. Of course. Just like, some, just like they can't cut it out of the caribou recording of the... Oh, yeah, of the Coral Society. That's right. I don't know who in the world would scream, Hi, Mr. Burden, or whatever it was. <laughs> yas, Mr. Burden. Oh, I, yes. Yas, Mr. Burden. I don't know. I don't know who did that. I hadn't thought about it. was pretty crazy. That's what I thought. A whole bunch of <laughs> random people looking in the, our corner, and we were looking, too. <laughs> Where'd that come from? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> hmm. So, um, uh, so we're going to be in James chapter 1, verses 12 through 18. And, uh, and so let's go ahead and actually read that section first as we get started. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'd like to read those seven verses for us, please. Blessed is a man who perseveres under trial. For once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself does not tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is carried away and enticed by his own lust. Then, when lust is conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is accomplished, it brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. In the exercise of his will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, so that we would be a kind of first fruits among his creatures. Thank you. Um, so, we just, um, the last section dealt with perseverance and wisdom and favoritism a little bit and um, and so now as now as Jim continues on um, we're going to deal with uh, not just trials but temptations as well and actually both those together so um, starting in verse 12 uh, it says what's the, what is the reward that James promises will come to those who steadfastly endure trials Life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's a it's a promised crown of life, right? Which is um, you're going to receive that promise that um, of this. And so the question then is, uh, are there other passages of scripture that point to similar types of rewards that you can think of? Paul talks about the prize for the high calling yeah. of God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what I thought of was in Second Second Timothy, um, uh, both in chapter three and chapter four, they they go together because one lays out the faces of the other. Because um, there's that idea of enduring trials, and then there's the idea of the crown that is the reward afterwards. And in Second Timothy three. Uh, starting in verse 10, but you followed my teaching, conduct, purpose, faith, patience, love, perseverance, persecutions, and sufferings, such as happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, and at Lystra. What persecutions I endured, now of them all, the Lord rescued me. And indeed, all who desire to live godly in Christ will be persecuted. We have that promise there that goes with it. But then when you get into chapter 4, you go down to verses 6 through 8, um, it says, For I am, Paul says, I am already being poured out as a drink offering. The time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. 
The future is laid up for me, the crown of righteousness, for which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. And so um, there's at least one picture of, of the crown that's to come um, for those who endure, for those who persevere. Um, and then, uh, 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 you mentioned there's the striving for the, uh, for the prize of the upward call in Christ or something like that, I can't remember. Um, is that Philippians or? I can't remember. I can't remember where, that, where that was the one you were mentioning. Thank you. Philippians three fourteen. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Um, I don't know if that's the one you're thinking of, because I know he has a couple other places where he says similar type of things. Right. Right. Almost something in my mind says Ephesians, but I don't know where I would find it. <laughs> I guess that's why people memorize scripture, right? That's right. Grab a concordance. James is putting it, and it's something for us to know that that is, there is this promise that as we persevere in our trials, there's a reward for us. And, um, mm -hmm. and as much as we talk about how we, we should do things without reward, God knows how we're made. He knows that we like, mm -hmm. he's made us to like carrots mm -hmm. and to not like sticks. Right? So if he created us, he knows what we need. And one thing that we need is the encouragement that is a reward that's to come, to look forward to. So it says, how should the promise of reward for endurance motivate us in our walk with Christ then? So knowing that you have this crown that's waiting for you if, if you endure, um, how should we live? Striving for the crown on mm -hmm. the earth. <laughs> right. yeah. How else? What else should we do in our living? Well, we change how you feel about it. It's not like it's purposeless and stupid. It's actually achieving something for you. Right. Off that it, um, because it because it's actually purposeful, that means that God actually cares and actually is aware of the trials we're going through, and, and so the fact that there's a purpose to it means that God has planned it. There's a, mm -hmm. there's a there's a there's actually caring work that He's doing, mm -hmm. um, and, and so there's a there's a hope that comes in the painful times that there, it's not just um, it's not just empty. The other thing is that. That means that there's an end to the race. Mm -hmm. So uh, that means there's an end to the, the, the suffering. <laughs> there's, mm -hmm. there's a prize to be got at the end. That, 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 it's not interminable. <laughs> so, so that helps sometimes just to know there is there's an end point of this. You may not know where it is, but um. so then as we go into verse thirteen. Um, and he mentions that uh, that sometimes people think this is two different subjects, but they actually go together. Um, uh, and it says um, two, the two concepts of of, tr of trials and temptations go to, uh, are tightly related because, however, because trials in our lives will always lead us to temptation. Um, financial struggle, for instance, for example, leads us to distrust God. Stress tempts us to be selfish. Um, and so it asks us to think about and, and put down for ourselves what's the, what's the specific trials that we've experienced and consider the sins 
that you were tempted to fall into because of those trials. I don't know if you just want to write something that is down first and do something. So far. No, she's in the back of your head. Hi. I'll try to sit back this way. What's the back of the head to look at? If you want to share any, one, one I thought of though that, that um, was kind of common for anybody else's siblings is have, having a brother with me that my, that was my age. Um, let's just say that he didn't always agree with my way of going. And that's a that's a trial when you're actually pretty much any time in life, and uh, that tempted toward anger and violence and mm -hmm. <laughs> normal brotherly stuff, right? And uh, and toward words. Mm -hmm. Heartful words, and unfortunately, uh, too often it actually ended up in the fulfilling of those temptations as well. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's one that just yeah. They mentioned financial, but I think that's always a yeah. you know a thing to to just think what are, what are we going to do with this or that or you know. <coughs> um, and, uh, sometimes it's a real challenge. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts on some uh, some tim some trials that bring to and what type of temptations they bring? Where there's that pressure on you of, of don't, don't don't speak that out. But that's a, a lot of different ways they put it that you're tempted to hide or to or, or to even lie about what, what position you hold. Yeah. So that happens a lot of places that that pressure. The Bible teaches that God often in his providence ordains that his people should face trials. What are some passages of scripture that teach that truth? Um, or what, what stories in the Bible illustrate it? Probably there's a story in the Bible that probably popped right out to you um, of having to face trials. Somebody having to face trials. Does it only reduce to face trials? Yeah. Jesus. I thought of Job, of course. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the first one that comes to mind when I think of stories of it, right? It's, it's David Job. You know, yeah. certainly had a lot of trials. Yes. Some some his faults, some not his faults. Right. Daniel. Mm -hmm. Moses. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, it's still all the easy ones. Now you, now you can come up with the rest of them. Somebody. <laughs> Pretty much think of pretty much any you know, any person in the Bible um, who's living godly is going to fit, is going to mm -hmm. have that picture of that. All the prophets, yeah. Abraham, yeah. Noah certainly did. Yeah, you can kind of just mop all around, all around because it's a common part of of, of life in a sinful world. Um, can you think of some? 
uh, passages of scripture that tell us uh, that as godly people we're going to face trials. Mm -hmm. You wanted James. <laughs> yeah. where the scripture is. I know it's in John um, where Jesus said, you know, um, be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Mm -hmm. That, you know, you'll have trouble. Yeah, that's, that's the part I was looking for. I wrote one down from John. I think it's John 15, verse 18. Okay, that's where it is. Yep. Yeah. At least it's one place in John that we talked about it. I don't know. Um, Not the same passage. No, it's like it's like the I can't it. says, oh, I've a rule, but it's in this section yeah. also. Um, Just that it was Hebrews 12, 1 through 12, where it talks about that. Uh, in there, he calls it discipline. Uh, and if you endure discipline from the Lord, mm -hmm. uh, that's that's a sign of our sonship. Mm -hmm. It is it is all over the place. Mm -hmm. it and, and, the, and the one that I mentioned earlier was in 2 Timothy 3 12 that all who desire to live godly in Christ will will suffer persecution. So, I just read that one. So if God sometimes ordains that his people will face trials, what then is James saying in verse 13 that God does not do? So, he doesn't tempt us to sin. Yeah. So he does bring the trials, but he doesn't bring temptation. conceived, it gives birth to sin, and when sin is full of mature, it brings forth death. So, um, it says that it uses two metaphors to describe the process of temptation and sin in our hearts. And the first, first 14 is an image from fishing. Temptation entices uh, a person to bite down on sin. To, uh, and then when the hook is set, he or she is dragged away. So, it's that picture of, of a hook with, a, with bait on it. Uh, that's the enticing. It's there. It's a terrifying thought. We see the pleasure of sin, uh, are enticed by it, and then before we even realize it, we have lost all control, and sin is dragging us away. How have you seen that process of temptation, enticement, sin, and dragging away play out in your life? That's something if you want to just, you might want to just answer for yourself. I don't have to share all the gory details of how temptation works in your life, because it's actually pretty similar book for all of us. But think about a, a recent sin and, and the prop, the steps to get there. Which actually, that's something that I, you know, when I'm counseling somebody who's caught in, you know, especially repetitive sins like pornography or, or addictions or stuff, that sort of thing, uh, try and help them see the, the entry point. Yeah, mm -hmm. You don't want to get there, but you got to stop it over here. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
says the second metaphor that James uses is one of conception and birth. What does it mean for a desire to conceive, or for lust to conceive, or passion to conceive, depending on whatever version you have? I sort of think that's the point where you give in to it. Mm -hmm. Before well, that, it says you're tempted, you're yeah. dragged away and enticed. Mm -hmm. You still haven't quite done this in right. yet, though. Yeah. It's planted. It's, yeah. it's starting to, has the possibility of growing. To me, it's an interesting picture because it makes me think, okay, now it's alive in me. It's, it was out there, now it's this living thing inside of me. Especially when you allow yourself to think about it. Yep. Instead of just stopping it in the yeah. butt and putting it in the bud. Mm -hmm. yeah. As we think of Romans 6, where Paul keeps telling us to put to death sin, mm -hmm. corruption, and everything. It's actually alive because mm -hmm. you've, you've, given, you've fed it, you've got, you've, it's growing inside you. you. Our job is to put it to death. And then once you put it to death, to count yourself dead to it. When once, uh, when once we act on our evil desires to give birth to sin, what does James say is the end result after sin is fully grown? In verse 14. No, 15. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so, um, he doesn't ask this part, but um, as we think about it, what, do you, what, in what way does that sin bring death? So you've been tempted, enticed, you've now uh, allowed lust to conceive or desire to conceive, and then you've entered into sin, and then you've now it leads to death. In, in what way does it, does that happen? Because all of us have sinned a lot, and we're mm -hmm. still sitting here. So, well, and, the, and his readers have sinned a lot, and they're still mm -hmm. sitting there and reading it, right? Mm -hmm. So, what do you think he's talking about when he says that it brings forth death? He's obviously not talking about immediate physical death. Right. It could for some, like Ananias and Sapphira, it was right. like that, right. but, but that's, that's not but often. For most of the time it is not. Yeah. Yeah. But without repentance, it will, you know, inevitably yeah. just send your life down, down, down. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it can bring death to all kinds of things, death to relationships, yeah. death mm -hmm. to, you name it, you know. Yeah. So it's, it's a far-flung thing, right, that, mm -hmm. that we can experience death even if we haven't yet died. Mm -hmm. And there's a reality that, that, yes, the wages of sin is death, but, but ultimately we do die because of sin, mm -hmm. um, we're, um, and there's an eternal death mm -hmm. for when you haven't repented. It's, mm -hmm. you know, if you keep walking in that, you, you have, you're showing that you're not, uh, not, not repentant and not actually aware of the salvation of the Jesus gives. So mm -hmm. You can't keep walking in that sin. Um, you're, you're, playing, you're playing with di very dangerous things and maybe fooling yourself. Yeah, it's a pathway. I mean, yeah. you know, and, and you start going down a path and it's it's harder and harder to come back from mm -hmm. where you've headed. Yeah. That's a good picture. So going to verses 16 through 18, why is James turning in verse 16 to mm -hmm. talk about God's goodness and faithfulness? You don't see that. It says, Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above, uh, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. And so you see the goodness and the gifts that are given and the, and the faithfulness and the unchangingness. There's no variation in him. So, um, so why does James turn in verse 16 and talk about God's goodness and faithfulness? We've been talking about hard things God sends into our life, the yeah. trials. Mm -hmm. God doesn't send the temptation, but the trials right. that come in our life. And how hard they are, and that you have to realize that they have a purpose, mm -hmm. or you wouldn't think that God was good. Yeah. You know, 
And then he also says, God does this on the temptations. Right. Mm -hmm. He's not tempting you to do evil. Yeah. Um, because he's good. Mm -hmm. It's part of it anyway. And, and that deals a lot with that second question, what those readers in danger of deceiving themselves about, uh, with particular reference to their trials and temptations that come with them. So, um, mm -hmm. but, um, what are they? What are they being tempted to do re regarding trials and temptations mm -hmm. that this is protecting them from? Well, they might be tempted to think that God has changed. Yeah. In a sense, like, well, mm -hmm. many people change, right? Yeah. That's what we know. Yeah. Based upon the trials that came upon us, right? So yeah, we'll blaming God. Looking, yeah. Blaming God or we're not trusting him anymore mm -hmm. because yeah. I don't know what he's going to do next. Yeah. Uh, often people have this idea that God's goodness means that they are, they have this protective shield good. around him and around them and that they'll never experience pain, mm -hmm. suffering, difficulty. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think there's also a deception of thinking that trials are necessarily bad. Mm. Trials are hard, mm. but trials actually, from this, are actually a good gift from God. Because um, without trials, then you don't um, you don't have your faith tested, and so you don't grow in perseverance, and then you don't become mature. And so the trials are actually a gift. Which, you know, if you think about that. That, that helps keep us from the temptation part. Like, okay, God, this, this is a gift for me. I, I don't need to get angry about it. I don't need to be upset. I need to rest in whatever you've brought, you've brought to me. That, that's, a hard, that's a hard truth. Uh, that, that goes very much with um, Paul not only saying, be thankful in all things, but be thankful for all things. Mm -hmm. that, 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 you know, that's a that really difference. You know, there's, you have both parts of it that you give thanks in all things and to give thanks for all things. And because even the trials, the difficulties, the hardships are, uh, are a gift from a good God uh, who points it carefully. It just doesn't really feel that way, though. <laughs> This, uh, what do you think James is contrasting God with when he says, with him there's no variation or shadow due to change? Could be too different. Uh, mm -hmm. Could be us. Yeah. You know, because we, we do <laughs> yeah. have a lot of different responses to things that happen to us. Mm -hmm. I think that makes a lot of sense with verse 8 where he, he warns us against being double-minded and unstable in our ways. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, um, by asking for wisdom and not believing that we're going to receive it. Um, you know, There's this picture of man being double-minded and yet God is unchanging. So then he... Um, he goes in, in verse 18, in the exercise of his will, in the exercise of his will, he brought us forth by the word of God, the truth, so that we would be a kind of first fruits among his creatures. And that, um, that phrase brought us forth. Um, some versions have it as begat, some, um, uh, some totally change the word born, word order that says, um, uh, um, we were born by the word of truth, by his will, you know, so it depends on which version you have. So that brought us forth is is to to be to beget or to birth um, to bring bring forth in life. Um, so it says, um, uh, what does it mean that uh, to be brought forth in that case? How, how are we brought forth? How are we how are we begotten? Well, through 
salvation. Yeah. yeah that's it. So when people talk about that James doesn't talk about salvation, he actually has it, but it's just like, you know, he just gives it kind of quickly because he's talking to believers. So he's, he's using words that they would understand. Um, and so that's where it points us to John 3, 1 through 6, the, the conversation between Nicodemus and Jesus. Um, and what does Jesus, Jesus teach Nicodemus about birth? Being born again, yeah. And so um, there, uh, there's definitely that picture there that's, that's uh, not that James was looking at the book of John, the book of John wasn't written until much later, but James did know of Jesus' teaching. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so uh, this idea of being born from above or born again uh, is there. So um, so then it tells us, so um, in your sense of his will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, so we'd be kind of first fruits among his creation. Um, so what is the word of truth that we're talking about? Okay. It's the scriptures, right? The, the, and ultimately, the testimony of Jesus that that comes from the gospel, that comes from the, the scriptures and aligns with the scriptures. And so, um, we have it as the full Old New Testament. That this time, they had what we call the Old Testament, the Tanakh, um, and then they had the eyewitness testimony of the of of Jesus and his teachings, his life, his death, his resurrection, and so. So they've been born from the word of truth. Um, and, um, and so the question that he asks is, if we're brought forth by the word of truth, or if we're born from the, by the word of truth, um, do you think it's possible for a person to be saved apart from the gospel? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> so that, that seems to be the, the clear the clear testimony of scripture throughout, not just with James, mm -hmm. but James would definitely agree with um, uh, with Paul. I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God for salvation uh, to the Jew first, also to the Greek. Um, it, this this is the testimony that brings life. Um, now, there's an interesting part of this is that um, Being that it's, that we're born, who does James say is doing all the work in this? God is. Because yeah. well, what are some things that tell us that it's God that's doing the work? It says, my version says he chose to give us birth. Mm -hmm. yeah. Of all he created, mm -hmm. he's working in creation there too. Yeah. So, um, and this goes back to the idea that, that Jesus is given to Nicodemus. Nicodemus is like, okay, how, how can we be born again? Well, you're right. You, mm -hmm. you can't just do, you can't be born again mm -hmm. on, of your own. This is um, what John says in, in chapter 1, where it's not by the will of man mm -hmm. uh, or the work of man, but it's, uh, it's by God mm -hmm. uh, that, that we're born again. And so um, I, I mentioned that because of some of the things we talked about when we were first talking about James, where a lot of people look at it and go, well, James is all about work, right? Mm. And, and and that's where people get confused of, you know, well, it's like a work salvation. Like, no, no, no. Salvation is here in verse 18. And it's a work of God. It's salvation by grace alone. Um, through faith alone, Christ alone. And it's, it's, it's a summary picture that's there that it's God's work that brings brings us to life by the word of truth. Um, um, is a work first and, first and always of God making us alive. Um, and yet, the rest of the book is going to say, and this is what it looks like once you're alive. Mm -hmm. So if you're alive, you're going to then um, show your faith through your work. Um, so so that, that's, that's an important thing to, to just get, grasp for us, is that, um, that we do have the actual gospel there. Mm -hmm. But it's, 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 very, it's, it's very condensed because mm -hmm. he's talking to believers mm -hmm. that already understand these things and, and should already be here. So he's just reminding them, not not explaining as Paul does in Galatians or Romans, where it's spread out. So, um, uh, 
So as James points in verse 18, it shows readers that God is good and that he gives good gifts. How does his example of the gift of regeneration accomplish that goal? There's not going to be a better gift. No. Right. Definitely not. So. So it is. Try to think. Treasure in the field, pearl of great price, all of Jesus' parables. And so um, it tells us that it's like what what Paul says in Romans 8.32. And um, you know, Romans eight thirty two is part of the, 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 you have the you have you know um, what we're told in, in verse twenty eight that God works all things to, together for good for those who love Him and call to a point of purpose and then then there's that uh, that chain of uh, of uh, of uh, salvation that's there uh, those who be formerly destined uh, become before the image of the Son. Um, and those who are destiny called, those who are called, he justified, those who are justified, he also glorified. Um, and then, with that, in light of this, okay, so now you've been, you've been um, called and justified and, and, glor- and, and you will be glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who indeed did not spare his own son, but delivered him over for us all, how will he not also with him graciously, graciously give us all things? So, um, Paul says, yeah, that's the greatest gift. And so, if he gave Jesus, and in giving Jesus, he gave you life, how, how else is God going to be good to you? Mm. And so, uh, the idea is that just, you just keep counting them. It's, uh, it's a treasure chest of, mm-hmm. of, of good of goodness being done for him. So, um, it's that same type of, of picture of, uh, of uh, uh, that good gift is uh, of, of salvation, of, re- of regeneration, is, uh, is the greatest of gifts, and yet it's also a foretaste of even, of even more giving that he'll give us. He is a good giving God. So, um, these three sections here, Gospel Glimpses, Whole Bible Connections, for like the soundings. I mentioned that, that, that then when you do the reflections after those, to just pick one of them to focus on it. Um, mm-hmm. and so that, that way you, you are, uh, um, like you reflect, you're reflecting on one specific one to really think a little more deeply about. Um, uh, but, uh, but with each of these, they're, um, they're just a little bit uh, deeper, deeper thoughts to think about, or, or maybe some different ways of thinking about some things, um, and connections in other parts of the Bible that maybe you haven't thought of. Um, and so, I don't know if you've looked at any, but if you want to, um, if you want to just pick one right now, and, and you can kind of read through, and then and then we can talk about and just it just if everyone picks something like, out of out of those out of those three, you want to pick one from each right now. But if you
cái con xem cái cái con gì quan trọng góc of like the weird feature dude, yep. beach dude that's always like radical bro. Um, but it is like just this word that emphasizes how great the change is that's in your heart, you know? Um, and uh, when it was once only death, um, God is the giver of life. And I, I, um, I think it's like, like it said in James, you know, where it's emphasizing um, our, how we're dead and stuff and how God puts us through trials um, you only want life when you realize that you're you know living in death mm. um, and so I don't know I guess it's just a reminder of what it is to be saved how great that is to when you just take a moment to marvel on it mm-hmm. And then it's also something that's uh, a reminder to take to uh, the people around us because, you know, as I said earlier, uh, you can't be saved unless you've heard the word. And so how are they to hear the word unless you give them the word? And then, you know, through the word, you explain, y'all are nasty, here's the salvation, you know? That's quite the way to, to approach it. Yeah. <laughs> I brought in stuff from your lesson. Yeah, Almost like I paid attention. Gross. Barely. Yeah. Kathy, what are some things that stood out to you? <coughs> yeah, I was looking more at the one of, of his own will. Mm-hmm. You know, that. Um, didn't have anything to do with us mm. getting off with him, why would God choose me? You know. Um, and it doesn't get into that at all. Mm. It just talks about the fact that God did choose us. It was given. We had nothing to do with it in a sense. Not We didn't, of our own will, choose God. Right. first fruits of his creatures there in our whole Bible connections just that picture of us as uh, as the saved um, and when you look at Romans 8 there's that uh, picture of creation groaning for the redemption that's to come and as we as as people are saved it's a foretaste of that redemption that's still to come that's yet to come just as we're brought from death to life um, so there will be a full redemption of this of this creation. It's a violent redemption of, it, of creation, but the reality is that it's no less violent than actually what happens internally. We just don't realize it. Is that um, like how how violent is it to take a dead person and make him alive? 
Mm-hmm. So that is a that's a that is a full everything act. And, and so it will be with the full redemption of the creation that, that is still to come and we're just we're the first fruits, we're the we're the we're the foretaste of what's to come. And as we're redeemed and experienced that foretaste, it also gives us that desire just that as creation's growing it makes us groan for it also. So, that, that one kind of stood out to me. Okay. Anyway, um, so this next week, um, we'll be working on week four, Hearing and Doing God's Word, which ends 1, 19 through 27. Um, and, uh, and as you see, there's, there's a lot of asking us to try and think of other parts, so it's good if you get a chance to, to mm-hmm. look at it ahead of time, if your week allows for it. And then especially with the gospel lenses, the whole Bible connections, the theological soundings, taking some time to think about what, like some of those things and what, what ones stand out because it, it might help you like, kind of start making some connections that, mm-hmm. that you maybe wouldn't have normally made um, if you think about it. So, yeah. Any other thoughts on that passage? It's a good passage. So. <laughs> Understanding of your gospel and so much that he can teach us. And just pray that you be with uh, Becca as she plays today and, and what you're just shares your word and conducts the service, Lord, in each part. Uh, honor and glorify you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.